Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> morning. We'll start anyway, even though the even though the pastor's talking up the back. Turn, turn him up. We could whistle. Our first song this morning. <laughs> our first song this morning calls on Christians everywhere to rejoice. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Let's get ready for church. I'm leading this morning, so we're starting on time. <laughs> Sorry to dis- disappoint you. Perhaps we'll start again. <laughs> Our first song this morning calls on Christians everywhere to rejoice. Yet at some times it might seem difficult to rejoice. So I just thought I'd bring to you a, a thought that came through my emails a few days ago. Here today, you may be tempted to think, what's wrong with the place? The tea isn't hot enough. The lights are too bright. The temperature too cold. Music too loud. You don't know the songs. It's worth remembering that the Ukraine churches are gathering in subway tunnels while bombs blast overhead. No coffee, no musicians, in real time, in real life, worshipping the king above all kings as their world is crumbling down. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul knew suffering as well. In Romans 5 he says, Since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Rejoicing doesn't happen just because we're happy. Rejoicing comes because of our hope. All who trust in Jesus are adopted as as his children. Whatever the situation we are in, we have the assurance that God is in, the assurance that God is in control of the world and will restore us to life in him as it was meant to be in peace and harmony. So as we commence our time together this morning, let's rejoice in the hope that we have in Jesus. Please stand and sing.
Since the Creating Safe Spaces workshop is on next Saturday, Windsor South Church, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And for the leadership team, there's something on afterwards. I don't know how long it goes, but that's it. But don't forget to do your online session first. And we still have two tickets untaken, so if anyone's interested, please see me afterwards. That'd be great. Thank you. Routine meetings, you can see they're all there. Probably no need to say them again. Uh, don't forget reading the Bible. If you haven't caught up with what's going on, there's a, an app and Ben is the one to see about that uh, reading together through, is there a time frame? Right, another week to go on this series, have a break, then start another series after Easter. But yep, see you Ben. The camp out, I wasn't here last week and I heard it was called off. And yeah, probably, probably thankfully it was called off because it <laughs> rained. <coughs> so do we have an alternate, an another day? No, no, okay, what's this space? As it says there. Yep. Ladies morning tea is on this week. Uh, Janet's not here this morning, but she will be catching up with some of you who haven't confirmed yet. Um, I'll just get a note. I've been given instructions. <laughs> right, it's, uh, yeah, there'll be some carpooling going on, so if you don't want to drive or can't drive, uh, there'll be some someone with a spare seat. Um, so don't worry about that. And the uh, obviously the, the events to Jay and Jessica's cafe up for Ambing. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, ben, something about Alpha. Yeah. Uh, that's right. After after Easter, the church is running a. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix that in a sec. <laughs> After Easter, the church is planning to run an Alpha course, which is a um, probably about eight to ten week course where anyone is welcome from all faith backgrounds and all beliefs. And it's a it's basically it's a safe and welcoming space to to explore um, the ideas of faith, um, life, and meaning. It's a Christian course. It introduces people to Jesus in a really really welcoming way. Um, Next Sunday at Face to Face at 4.30 p.m. here at church, we're going to do a little bit of a kind of intro and training session. Anyone is welcome. If you're interested in attending the course, you can come along to see what it might be like. If you're interested in being a host or a helper at the course, we would love to see you there to, to kind of run through some training and prep for that. So that's, that's Alpha uh, kind of training and taster session next Sunday, 4.30 p.m. Now I'm going to try and fix this. <laughs> The music team's had quite a bit of diversity the last few weeks. Well, we're flexible.
morning everyone. Welcome to church. We're starting to get back to normal. Uh, we still have quite a few people who are unable to be here, not so much now because of the floods but more because of COVID etc. So uh, we will be holding uh, each other up in prayer and uh, look forward to when we finally get back together all in uh, the one place at the one time again. But in the meantime, let's read from God's word and I'm going to ask you to read that together. We, if you don't mind, I'll invite you to stand and, uh, and we'll read this together. Matthew verses 5, 1 to 16, if you'd like to join me. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under feet. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Thanks, if you'd like to be seated. Well, this series is called The Biography. That's like when you get a book and you read about someone famous. Obviously, we have a book, the Bible, and it contains not just a biography, but a narrative, or we call it a gospel, good news about this person, Jesus. And what I wanted to do in this series leading to Easter is to follow Jesus and to watch and listen to the things he does. So watch the things he does and listen to the things he says. And as you listen to him, to be going like, what really was it about him that sort of shone out, that stood out, that we would still be reading these words? I mean, the Beatitudes, these blessed words, are one of the most famous sayings in all of history. Not just Christendom, but in all of history. Which I have to be really, really, really honest, every time I read them, they disturb me. They, they, they just don't make sense in some ways. So let's stop, let's pray, because I'm going to ask that you would actually hear Jesus. The scene is that they're sitting on a mountainside. I used to think, and I visited this church, I think I've mentioned it before, in New Zealand, at Lake Takapo, the Church of the Good Shepherd. And right behind the preacher is this great big window onto the lake. And I just thought, well, the good point is if the preacher's boring, you're just going to look straight through him into the lake. The bad thing is, if the preacher's good, you'll be looking at the lake and miss what he's... But actually, Jesus took them up onto this sort of ledge up onto the mountainside, and behind them is this beautiful lake, this beautiful sea this before them, and there's that connection, as it were, with God. God is always in the high place. And I, I, truthfully, you go and you sit on a mountain, you look out over, and you literally say, Oh, God. And this is where Jesus took them to talk about the kingdom of heaven. So let's pray. Father, we want to hear the voice of Jesus as he reveals you. As he upsets us 
by showing us the difference between your heart, God, your character, God, your love, your grace, your mercy, and our worlds. So help us, God, to hear the words of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I, I was wondering what would be the opposite of the Beatitudes. And I'm going to read a little bit that I found uh, that somebody wrote. I don't even know who it is. But they called it the Cursitudes, the opposite. Um, I don't actually love it, but it, it captured, you know, he said this, Cursed are the self-satisfied, for they as good as they will ever be. Cursy, cursed are the party goers, for soon the party will be over. Cursed are the forceful, for they will end up with nothing. Cursed are those who hunger and thirst for God, sorry, with no hunger and thirst for God, because they'll never find fulfilment. Cursed are the merciless, for it will come back to them. Cursed are the impure, for they will only see darkness. Cursed are the troublemakers, for they will be left unclaimed. Cursed are those who have gained prominence through immorality, for their end will be one of obscurity. Cursed are you when people praise you and look up to you and say all kinds of flattery about you because of your resistance to God. He goes on, but I'll leave it at that. There is something different, and, and when I looked at these Beatitudes, when you look at you know, you're sitting there with Jesus. Just imagine that. The crowds. And, and the, the format that Matthew has taken is he's literally shown us who Jesus is from his birth, taken us through, you know, Egypt, and then out into the water or through the waters with John at Jesus' baptism. Then he goes out into the wilderness and you see this mirror of Exodus of Moses leading God's people. And then as he starts, something he breaks the mould because everybody, they bring crowds of people to whom are sick and broken and demonised and Jesus, it says, heals them all. And it would just be this line after line. As, and we're not just talking about, you'll be okay, go home. We're talking about this absolutely stunning miracle and the crowds are swelling because no one has ever seen this before. This man, Jesus, has has literally blown their minds. Actually, a bit later in Matthew 5 there, the commentary is from the Pharisees and the, from the people. They said of Jesus that he taught as one who had authority. And the literal Greek word, and that put them out of their mind. We say they were astonished or astounded or shocked or surprised. But they had never heard anybody speak as clearly, as simply, and as with so much authority before. And as you look at sort of the first sermon, as the crowds are sitting there before him, and, and that mirror, as I said, you know, when if Matthew is trying to mirror what happened with Moses and God's people, it was only Moses that went up onto the mountain and saw God in the burning bush. But what jumps out of me is to me is they're following Jesus and they're seeing the power of God through Jesus as he keeps healing everyone and then he takes the crowds to the mountain and sits there and talks and as the commentary a little bit later as one who speaks the very words of God so unlike Moses who's the only one who's there now we have the populace all gathered before him and he teaches them we call it the Beatitudes, because that word, the Bia, or the Beatitudes there, means blessed. You are blessed. Blessed isn't just like good luck. It is that imparting. Something has been imparted to you. Something has been given to you that makes your life better. You have to see that because this is, in the application of who we are as a church, this is important that God does something for you that not only just makes your short-term life, but the Beatitudes will stretch through into eternity. They make your eternity better. And that's really important. And the way that Jesus speaks is not just blessed to you tomorrow, because he talks about 
the eternal. So something is imparted. The blessing is imparted. Remember the song we did last Christmas, not this one just gone, but the one before that, the, the blessing that came out of Numbers. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and your children and your children. It is something where you want God to do something to give to you what you can't get on your own. But listen who is God blesses. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You've probably heard this. See, how can you be blessed when you're poor? Because you could say, rich are you when you're poor. But then he adds, because yours is the kingdom of heaven. You know, there is something about trauma and tragedy and we're seeing it. Yesterday I went with some people from Rotary and what was curious, they're actually from the um, Tamil, uh, they're a Tamil group of people. And we went around, we visited uh, 15 homes that are totally lost in the floods. And I'll give you the punchline to this in a minute, but one thing I saw as folk had lost everything. They're literally dragging their mattresses and their beds and their TVs and everything that has been swamped and putting it out in a big muddy pile out the front while it's still raining. And so, blessed are the poor? Well, I want to come to that because I saw something not just for me. Actually, what I, I loved is that we facilitated neighbours who didn't lose everything meet with neighbours who lost everything. But I saw a blessing, and I'll, as I said, I'll fill it in in a moment. But yours is the kingdom. When you've lost all of this earthly stuff, and no matter who you are, you will lose everything. It's a matter of time, but you will lose everything. Everything you have stored and gained and treasured will be taken away. Because at one point we'll get to the, our last couple of breaths. And what's in your pocket, what's in your bank, what's in your cupboards will matter nothing. We'll be impoverished. But also, when we all have this hope of the other side, we'll be reaching out to go like, what's next? And everybody does. I've stood at many a funeral, particularly I find it ironic, the funerals where folks say, we're not religious, we don't want God. And then they stand and say, I'll see you there one day, Grandma. Blessed are the poor, because they see the kingdom of heaven. The veil is lifted, everything's stripped, and you go, oh God. Some of us, are blessed to lose before the end of our days. Now, there can be a voluntary losing where you give it all away. That's where they talk about the pearl of great price. You'll sell everything for that one thing that lasts, the kingdom of heaven. All of this will fade into insignificance for what lasts for eternity. That's why these sayings are so powerful, because they strip you back, and the people are sitting there and go, Keep in mind, the ones particularly who were listening to Jesus were poor. The Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't get what he was saying. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Let me just jump into 2 Corinthians. I've... Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in our troubles. Let's just stop there for a moment. The first port of call when you or I are in trouble is that we have that opportunity to be comforted by God. And we've got to be careful not to rob people of that God comfort. We have to allow people, and that's why Ecclesiastes mourns and that's why in the Beatitudes, blessed are those who mourn. Because it gives an opportunity for our hearts, and our hearts will cry out, God. And what is beautiful about God is it's bigger than all of us as a church. 
So in the middle of the Ukraine, there are people crying out, oh God. In Russia, there are people crying out, oh God. In the Hawkesbury, there are people crying out, God. There are people up on the north coast from Lismore, Ballina, who are crying out, God. And no word of a lie, as I stood with a mum who had to hand her little baby in the Hawkesbury, actually curiously in the Blacktown district, hand her baby over the balcony to some bloke who's in a tinny who is saving her and her baby. She went, oh God. See, those who mourn, who cry out, God will answer them. You have to trust. That's what Jesus said. Blessed are those who cry out, oh God, who mourn because he will answer them. I don't have to answer. You don't have to answer. Job's friends got it wrong because they kept trying to give an answer and it was the wrong answer. Ecclesiastes says there is a time to mourn. Praise God that when we mourn, he comforts us so that we can comfort those in trouble with the same comfort we ourselves have received from God. See, what you've received from God, that forms a memory within you and you're able to mirror or give the same comfort to others as they're mourning. You get it. And so all of our tragedies are not just thrown in the bin, but they're the fodder that has enabled us to meet with God. They're the memories. That's why they stand out. The times that I remember the most in my life are not even necessarily the good times, even though they're in the photos up on the wall. But my brain still goes to these tragedy times. And it's in those times, your tragedy and mine, that we've been comforted. We know that God connected with us. And to be truthful, sometimes we didn't cry out, oh God, in a loving way. We cried out, oh God, in a horrible way. But I have this sneaking suspicion. No matter what the motivation that brings the God out of our mouth, he comforts. He answers that cry. And it may take six weeks or six months or six years, but God answers the cry. He comforts and he forms in us that memory of God's comfort. And then we know how to comfort. I sat with somebody beside their bed as they were dying, a young woman. And during the six weeks of her death, I had nothing to say. I was devastated said nothing, just sat there. And I watched people come in and there was some really weird comfort, not. There were some really dumb words, real Job, you know, friends, comforter words. And I felt about as useless as. But as I sat with her mum and dad and her, she just said, thank you for being there. And I felt like saying, what? I didn't do anything. I didn't say anything. And that was a good tick. See, I don't have to. You don't have to have magic, wise, biblical answers. It's the presence of God that comforts. And let me say, it's the presence of God's people that comforts. So that we know how to comfort because we give the same thing. You know what? Sometimes God doesn't speak. But you just know. And sometimes the knowing comes after the fact. You look back. Remember that ridiculous but good footprints in the sand? Hang on. There were times when I was at my lowest, there's only one set of footprints. Where were you, Jesus? Oh, I was carrying you. They're my footprints. See, the whole point of the poem is I didn't realise that when the footprints faded to one set, it was God who was carrying us. I thought they were mine but they're actually gods. Let's go back. And I'm not intending to get through all of these, so be rest assured. <laughs> I knew that there's no way we could do them all. I just wanted to give a sampling of something about the kingdom of heaven. So blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, because they'll be confident. They're all the same. The meek, for they will inherit. Or some say the lowly, 
because they will inherit the earth. So what do you mean I'm going to inherit the earth? Well, it's saying blessed. You know, the distractions sometimes of the physical take away the reality and the depth of the spiritual, the kingdom of heaven. The distractions of the physical. And as I was saying, that same pattern as things are stripped back, as my soul is calmed, the meek, and my pride is stripped because now I can't, God starts to fulfill, starts to answer, starts to bless according to his plans and purpose. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And you know, from the littlest kids, when our little kids are having their little fight, you know when you're fighting and you go like, that's not fair. Have you ever said that, guys? That's not fair. That's righteousness. We have this innate, it's instilled in us. We know what is right. You know, you cried out, that's not fair. And whether you're a little kid or a big kid, you went, that's blessed are those who hunger and thirst over what is right, what is fair. Because they will be filled. God will do not just what is fair, but what is righteous. And that's the point as we follow through to Easter, that Jesus will step in. As we said, I think it was last week, I'm losing track, it's been so busy. When Jesus said to John, I do this to fulfill all righteousness. It's not just the negative of baptism, of washing away or the symbol of washing away our guilt, but it's the positive of the righteousness of what Jesus will do throughout his whole life in being perfect and being obedient and fulfilling everything that is right. Not only the Ten Commandments, but the 400 and, I wrote it down, sorry, 613 commandments of the Old Covenant. He will do everyone right. So all righteousness is not just washing away guilt, that's the negative, but the imparting of God's rightness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after rightness. Do you want righteousness? Would you love to have your life start all over again, but this time everything be perfect? The bad news is I can't do that for you. I can't promise that. The good news is if you long for and you see what was wrong, God can wash what was wrong and then give to you what is right. Impart. That's why these words are blessed and imparting. And imparting. God giving to you. Blessed are the merciful. I know this sounds like, but there are people, and I've watched the callous glaze in people's eyes, who don't know mercy. And in fact then mirror that lack of unforgiveness, no grace to others around them. And it comes out in the actions of, I don't care. You know, I watched people cry yesterday. And I said to one old lady, it's good that you cry. You know, it is good that our heart breaks. It is good when you see the news, and I hate the news at the moment, and you see the shelling and the bombing and the carnage, it is good that you cry. It is good that your heart breaks. See, blessed are those who are merciful. That's the beginning of mercy. Who want to actually help and be generous. Who want to bless. And I had someone up the mountain saying to me, I better shut up, my wife's telling me that I'm depressing you as he recounted, because he's got direct connection with some folk in the Ukraine. And he and his group have helped a couple of young girls get out of the Ukraine and, and up into, I think it's Poland. And I said to him, it's okay. I don't mind that my heart breaks. And do you know why I don't mind? Because of this. Because it motivates me. It makes me get off my bottom and do something. Even if that, the, the simplest that I can do is to pray. And yet I am believing because this whole context is blessed, that blessing, that imparting coming from God. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to come back to what I said. Yesterday as I walked around, and sorry, I, I'm imposed this, I've actually crossed out some of my sermon here and put this in. Because what dawned on me is that as I went through with other people, 
There was a few that burst into tears, as I said. But what was interesting, they're working really hard to fix everything. And repeated times, folks said, we've been left on our own. And this lady that was going through, she's not a church lady, she's not a God lady, yet. <laughs> but as she went through, and you know, this lady breaks down in tears, she hugged her. And that's why I put down. And I think we get it wrong. We think, you know, oh, sorry, we're coming up here. We think that our job is to be the hugger all the time. Well, I didn't hug anyone. I stepped 1.5 metres away, not just because of COVID, but you know what I saw is that that lady would never had a chance to hug that lady if it wasn't for the tragedies that have just hit by way of the floods. And there was this connection. Our glory is that we get, got to facilitate that. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, or you are the light of the world, and that light should be hidden. We've been incredibly blessed through tragedy as a church. We've seen fire and we've seen three floods. We've only been, I personally have only been involved in two flood recoveries, but fire. And as a community, a church community and extended, we have been seen to do more than we have done. I haven't given you, but I will put it on our Facebook page and show you, but we were blessed and given, oh, it's over, over 100 mattresses, all brand new, all over $1,000 worth of mattresses, all been in stories down, farming them out, laughs, floods and this. We just sent, we, now keep in mind I didn't, we just sent 50 mattresses to Lismore. A transport company took them up for free. A storage company moved them from A to B for free. Churches of Christ, and I love that first song, you know, rejoice, rejoice, the Church of Christ. I used to be Churches of Christ, sorry. Now I'm Baptist. <laughs> they, they actually drove them up. They sort of went up there and distributed them for us. And yet our name's on the brand. We were part of working with the churches. Last Sunday after church, I sat there downloading people who were giving our church $100 gift vouchers, Coles, Kmart, Bunnings, downloading one by one, $10,000 we took last Sunday that we've been giving out yesterday, etc. $10,000 we were given to give to people. And then I think it was Saturday or Friday, no, it must have been Friday, I got a phone call from an organisation saying, oh, we've just raised $300, $250 Woolworths vouchers, which can be used for petrol or groceries or whatever. And quickly calculate, $75,000. That's not from the church. That's people have given to us to give to others. You are the light of the world. Our biggest motivation will be our hunger and thirst for righteousness. Ours will be like, all we just go, and I've said it, this is not from us. We just get it in that hand and give it in that hand. But we care. Because every one of you and me, we've been broken. We know what it, what it means to be comforted. We know what it is to meet with God. And our ultimate prize, our ultimate goal, our ultimate aim is that those folks that we care for will see God. Not me, not you. We'll see God. Our goal, our aim, our hope is that in their mourning, in their grief, they'll see the light. I, I am confused and I'm not going to go into it uh, but I'll just tell you the truth. In the same way, let your light shine before others. I'd rather let Jesus' light shine because mine's a bit dim sometimes. <laughs> but you know, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He's the one who reveals and shines in the darkness and shows the Father's face. Somehow we're incorporated, let your light shine. And what I do love is we're on the hill here. 
we're on a mountain. And as I got called, whatever day it was, and someone said, how come you guys are in Hawkesbury Valley and Shane's Park? And I went, I don't know, because people are ringing us up. Why are they ringing us? Oh, I found out why. Because we have a reputation for caring. You may not have realised that. But we have a reputation for caring. And that's why I love this church. For the care that people have given to one another. And I can just see. So my pre-ad is, we're aiming, as Ben said, alpha. We want to tell people why we care. And that's because of who Jesus is. So Alpha, we're looking at starting that. I think it's the 1st of May. Before that, last year when we had shared Easter together, we did our, our Easter hunt through the village. And I, think, I don't think 130 turned up, but 130 registered. So we're looking to do that again. And, uh, and that was a great... We had this whole courtyard full of people not from our church. And we had fun. We had fun. Well, we want to do that again on Easter Sunday. On Easter morning, we get to share the resurrection hope that we have. On Easter Friday, we get to mourn together. It's really weird. Good Friday, yet it's morning. And we'll have our pancakes again out in the barbecue. But it's our chance to show that we care, to share. And as these words said, blessed. Impart God's grace. So, last couple of words. Realise that you have been blessed and God blesses people through you. You impart grace. Do you understand that? You are a conduit of God's grace, of God's blessing. Blessed are those who, and then as Paul puts it in Corinthians, that we bless with the same blessing that we've received. Here's my illustration to finish. Apparently, I've got to get this right because there's doctors here. <laughs> We're born with our hands. We've got to learn to open and keep our hands open. Everything that comes in, we give out. You're blessed, you bless. That's our calling. The light on the hill, we shine. But I don't have much of myself. We shine what we've seen in Jesus. The salt part, God has sustained us and we sustain. We actually talk about what's true. We give what we have in and through the light of Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, our brain still mind is trying to comprehend how upside down your kingdom is that, you know, instead of being all power and, and, and amazing and, and strength and we're humbled. We mourn, we grieve. We see not only our world, but our community broken and, and our hearts grieve. Well, thank you, God. In, our, in and through our tears and our care and our, our concern and our heartbrokenness, Lord, not only bless us, but Lord, I pray as Jesus said, we are a light, we are salt. May you bless us that we overflow, fill us that we flood our nation with the grace of Jesus. Thank you that we get to sit and listen to Jesus when he said words that really expose the reality of this world where everybody just wants to be great and powerful and all-encompassing and the reality of the kingdom where you weave us together as one, where we bless one another in the presence and with the presence of your son Jesus and the power of your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. So... Lord, help us as a church as we endeavour to share the love and the grace, the forgiveness, the new life in and through Jesus and your spirit. Help us to be humbled, to be heartbroken and to be filled with the hope and assurance that you've given us in and through the resurrection and your ongoing work, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At the start of his message, Stephen mentioned being out in the mountain, just enjoying God's creation. This song, Creation Sings the Father's Song, uh, it personifies creation and uses that to convey God's plan to offer salvation through the sacrifice of his son 
and ultimately to renew the heaven and the earth. Uh, so please stand and sing with us. When I, when I spoke via uh, Zoom or whatever I was doing, you know, when I could see a little few of you and that, I loved hearing the praise, the spontaneous, you know, like I love it. We've got to get more charismatic, sorry. <laughs> Amen. It's, yes, we've got to just let it out more, yeah. Well, look, I want to ask you to pray, and I'm being pushed to believe that, as I just tried to say to you, imparting. There is, we genuinely, no, I don't mean we genuinely, but literally God touches people, answers our prayers. We're not just doing something by rote because God said pray. Like we've got this belief that's been reinforced with answered prayers that when we bring people before God, he gets involved. I mean, he's, he's calling us because he does already love and care. 
So as we pray, I'm going to, I don't know how you physically do it, you know, picking on the pennies and the charis, charismatic guys, you know, they sort of go like, they put their hand, there's some way you've got to connect. You know, we can't have these people before us and lay our hands on them or, or whatever, but I want you to connect, not just go, amen. You know, I want you to go, yes, God, please. You know, I want you to engage, that your heart cries out for folk. So I want to ask, and you'll pray for us as we plan and purpose for our Easter ministry. It is a time in our community that still, someone was whinging about hot cross buns the other day, and I went, amen, that we've got hot cross buns. <laughs> like, you know, our world goes, yeah, cross, what's that? And we can answer. Good song in the light of the fact we've just prayed. <laughs> Warwick was putting to test that first slide, you know. 
They didn't have the music or da da da. Not that I'm saying it was great, it was. <laughs> it just goes to show how much we depend on, on Wari. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> leading on that guitar, yeah. Leading in, yeah. Well, I love those words, by faith. That's what we don't see. Remember, Sue was doing a kid's talk. We can't see it, but we know it because God said, and he's promised it. So by faith, we're doing that. And uh, we're going to have morning tea. That's still church. Okay, we're not finished, finished. We're just moving on to the next room. And we, we spur one another on to love, good works. We remind each other of God's faithfulness. Maybe you even talk as we're having a coffee about an answered prayer, about an awareness of God's presence, about being blessed, or when you've been a blessing. So may God bless you richly. Oh, and then one other thing, sorry to hold you. I wanted to share the blessing on Tuesday uh, craft time. It was their 30 slash 32nd uh, anniversary. Is that right, Elaine? And I'm not embarrassing Elaine, but she got to share a really, really powerful, short, punchy message. I said I'm going to get her to preach later, but ask her about the thimble. That's all I'm going to say. Bless you. Let's have morning tea in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>